This video is a nested loop example. It shows a loop examples operator containing a loop attributes operator. To illustrate this, I've made a slightly contrived process that creates some Andrews curves from the Iris dataset. This is merely intended to show the sorts of operations that are possible when inside the various loop operators. So what we'll cover, we'll obviously start with what is an Andrews curve. Um, then we'll give an overview of the process to calculate the curves and then we'll dive into the detail and we're using the transpose operator for the first time I haven't mentioned this in a video before so I'll take a little detour into that but then we'll the, the main work of the process is actually inside a nested loop and there we'll look at the use of the extract macro operator the recall operator and the set values operator all within the context of a nested loop so first thing what is an Andrews curve so actually rapid minor has one built in so if I set a breakpoint here on this retrieve operation which is going to retrieve the iris data set we can look at some examples basically what you do is you choose Andrews curves there you go now what this is showing is all of the 150 examples in the iris data set there is there is one line for each example and the color is the label for that example and you can see there are three labels three classes rather satosa fascicular and and uh, virginica and what the andrews curves are showing is highlighting structure in what could be high dimension data so it's a way of visualizing differences between examples where there's a lot of dimensions now the Irish data set doesn't have that many dimensions so this is illustrative of the point but you can see one of these classes is a bit distinct from the other two so how do we make one well let's refer to Wikipedia when in doubt so here is the Wikipedia entry basically you have to calculate a function for each of the examples it's a function of t time and you use the each one of the attributes in the example to create a, a function so for the iris data set there are four attributes a1 a2 a3 and a4 so you would make a function something like a1 over root 2 plus a2 sine t plus a3 cos t plus a4 sine 2t and then what you do is you calculate what that result is by varying t between minus pi and plus pi let's go back to the data so that what that would mean is for the first row of the iris data set we'd make a function where it would be 5.1 over root 2 plus 3.5 sine t plus 1.4 cos t plus 0 0.2 sine 2t then what we do is we would plot between minus pi here and plus pi here and we would vary t and you get this smooth curve so I think one of these blue lines is likely to be the first data point and you can see that all the iris satosa data points seem to have the same shaped waveform and then obviously you repeat it for all the other examples so you can get a hint that this might lend itself to um, being done in a rapid minor process and basically what we're going to do I'm going to set a breakpoint here what we're going to do is calculate fill in rather each of these cells in this in this rather large example set so I've got time going down here and you can see minus pi up to plus pi and then each of these IDs represents one of the examples in the example iris example set 
So there will be 150 IDs here. So the problem we've got to face is we've got to go through this example set, filling in each one of these question marks with a function which is based on the values of the attributes for this particular ID and the time. So let's go back to the process. Let's just briefly mention how we got that actual example set that we're going to fill in. So it's in two parts. This part here generates a minus pi to pi. Now I won't go into detail as a bit of gymnastics. I've covered how to do this in previous videos. This bit um, uses the transpose operator and it rather cunningly takes the Irish data set, transposes it in order to get each of the IDs for each of the examples turned into attributes. And let's briefly look at that. So I'll set a breakpoint before the transpose and a breakpoint after. Let's run that. So there's the Irish data set before the transpose. There it is afterwards. And now you can see it's sort of it's turned rows into columns and columns into rows. And you can see there are now 150 attributes with ID 1, ID 2, ID 3, all the way to ID 150. And it's sort of combined the labels with the, with the actual attributes, which makes it confusing. But what I'm doing in this case is I'm simply filtering everything, but with an inversion on it. So the output from this operation here is actually a completely empty example set, but with the attribute names corresponding to the IDs of the examples in the Irish data set in the first place. All very neat. So now let's, if I set a breakpoint before here, let's just clear everything down. In passing, by the way, I'm using the remember operator here to store the original Irish data set. I'm going to need that later when I go inside one of these loops. So I'm setting a breakpoint before this join operation. And I'm going to show before and after for this just to show how it all works. So before the join, I have the Iris IDs here, which you saw me create using a transpose. And I have um, 101 examples for minus pi to pi, so time in 101 steps. After the join, by the magic of miracle of joining, you essentially see now we have the original time between minus pi and pi. And each of the IDs from the Irish dataset has now turned into an attribute, but because there's obviously it's all missing, because obviously there are no values yet to fill in. Okay, now we're going to go into the loop. So the first thing is we're going to do a loop examples. And the loop examples operator takes a simple parameter, which is a, a macro actually. So this is the macro that you can use to know where you are when you're inside the loop and it's example. If I go in here, now we're also doing a loop attributes. And in this situation, I'm selecting only the attributes which actually have, which correspond rather to the IDs of the examples in the Iris data set. And the way I'm doing it is I'm just invert, invert filtering using ID and time, which I know are present in the example set. So I'm excluding those. So that means by, by that method, I'm essentially only going to iterate over the attributes, which are not those, which will be the ones I'm interested in. So that's what these parameters and this select attributes does. In addition, there's a macro called loop attribute, which you need to know where you are. So again, now we're, now we're getting to the, the meat of the process. So let's go inside the loop attributes and let's look at each of the things in here. First thing to do is we work out by using extract macro where we are in time. So this now extracts into a macro called time the actual time in the context of the example loop that we're at. And we do that by setting extract macro and we, we choose an attribute, the attribute time and the example is the first example or the the nth example where example is set by the macro defined by the loop 
example operator. From here, if I click on the operator order, now I'm going to do these operators here, and now I'm going to recall the Iris dataset, which is what this operator does. It was called Iris, it's an ex type example set, and we mustn't remove it from the store because we're going to need it later. So we recall it. Now we're going to do some filtering to choose the particular attribute that we're on. And what happens here is we're basically saying if the ID of the recalled data set, which if you recollect is the Iris data set, if that equals the current value of the loop attribute macro, then we keep that row. It's a single row. And now what we want to do is calculate the actual thing we wanted to do in the first place, which is the Andrews curve formula. So if you remember from the Wikipedia entry, it's the A1 over square root 2, A2 sine time, A3 cos time, A4 sine time. And in this situation, we know we're at a particular time interval because that's the macro time here. And that creates a new attribute in the iris data set that we've recalled. But now we have to actually get that out into a macro, which is what this will do. So we populate a macro called result. Based on the result attribute that we've just created, we know there's only one row in the example set because we've done some filtering here. So now we set a macro called result, and over here we use it. So now we're going to use the set data operator to set a specific row and a column, I suppose, within the um, original example set that we're populating. So we know the example we're on, which is the macro called example. We know the attribute we're on, because that's the loop attribute macro. So by this method, we've now we've narrowed it down to a specific row and a specific column and then we're just going to set the value to be the the result that we've calculated in the macro and we just repeat that for all the possible times so I'll run that it takes about 30 40 seconds so it's quite slow the set data operator is quite slow and the result of that is going to be the final um, Rather nice looking Andrews curves. This is a guess types operator just to make all the types come out correctly. So you can see we're at 66 now, it's done 20 seconds about halfway. And you can see these macros here are changing in real time. You can see the ID it's at and the example it's got to. So it's, it's slowly making its way through the, through the giant um, example set that it's populating. And here's the answer. So now, to convince ourselves that it really is um, correct, we can plot, let's use the, um, let's use series. So now if you plot time, oops, there we go, time, and each of these, Hopefully you can see that you, you end up with a set of curves that look similar to the um, examples shown previously. Now the colours are, are simply because of the ordering, so I'm not able to colour them in based on a label. But the whole point of this, this is this is something I was doing recently, to try and understand if I could pick out different examples because the, the Andrews curve example in, in the default rapid minor plot view can sometimes be difficult to see which of the examples is the one that outlies. So by doing this approach, it's possible with a bit of <laughs> clicking around, you can find the one that outlies and it's a bit easier to identify. But anyway, you can have all sorts of fun with this. You can uh, do this sort of scatter 3D. So you could, for example, plot how does ID1 ID 51, which I know is a different label, and let's let's do that. And you can have all sorts of fun now plotting. This is like a litter juice figure that you might get in an oscilloscope. It's really quite interesting to see how these things vary. Okay. 
So let me just leave you with the final um, data view, which is here. Just to recap, so the time here is time between minus pi and pi, and each of these IDs corresponds to the ID within the original iris data set. And you can see we've calculated each of these cells one by one by judicious use of loop examples and loop attributes.